Langflow is another provider who offers a UI for Langchain. Similar to Flowwise, they also have these drag and drop elements and each of those blocks that you see or nodes that you see is connected to a code base. So in Langflow, they are using Python-based Langchain, whereas in Flowwise, they are using the JavaScript-based Langchain. So in theory, a lot of these blocks work in a similar fashion. The only difference that you'll probably notice is that some of these might have more options. So something like Langflow, you might see more of these options compared to Flowwise, although both of them, they're using Langchain as their code base. So there are a few ways that you can install Langflow. And if you're doing this on your personal computer or server, then feel free to follow the instructions. You can basically pip install Langflow. If you have some background in Python or so, or if you could follow instructions with the command line interface and perhaps just add some options here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at similar steps as we have seen with Flowwise installation. So we'll go with the railway and then we'll also look at how that could be done on render. So for railway, that's probably one of the easiest one that we will do the installation with. Uh, basically, what you'll have to do is you will go to the link that is shared in the lesson. And when you click the link, it will take you to a similar interface where you can go to railway app. If you have an account, then you can just deploy. If not, you just make an account and then deploy. And once you hit deploy, you will have similar questions asking, you know, what should be the name? So we can give it any name here. So I'm going to say API and maybe two, since I did a few of these tests before. So I'll keep it private for now, as I don't want the repo to be seen as public. And when I hit deploy, what's going to happen, as mentioned before, we are going to see similar steps as it will go through the uh, installation scripts, and then it will make that deployment available to us. Now, what I've seen is that this installation might take about 10 to 15 minutes or so. So you can start the installation and perhaps come back to that. And pretty much everything is automatically done for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, watching it or changing something. So with that, let's come back to this when it's completed. So now what I've done is just to save some time, I opened an installation instance that I had from before. So uh, pretty much following same steps, I deployed it. And when the deployment was complete, it just gave the screen check mark and it also said green over here saying everything is working good. And when I click this, it will take me to the Langflow installation instance that I have. Now I built a few of these apps before, so I see them available here. In theory, what you're going to see once you first install or deploy that this will be empty. So a couple of things in Langflow similar to Flowwise is that you have the option to uh, look at community examples. So there are a few of those examples just to give you an idea. And in here, if you fork the example, it will bring it to your collection directly. And that's what I have done before. So for example, if I were to open this basic chat fork example, then I'll see this is these are the blocks, and it's already available in my account. So with that, there are a couple of options. I can change settings. I can change the name if needed or description. Also, there is an option to go back or go forward in case if we would like to undo or redo something. You could also make a new app or a flow by clicking new. And then if you were to go back in your collection, you'll see all of those available. And in the main page, um, as you can see, you have similar option of downloading the collection. So the way I see it is the whole folder could be downloaded with all of these flows in there or apps, whatever way you would like to call it. And then later on, if you were to upload collection, you can bring that back in. 
something similar to Flowwise that we have seen. You can start a new project from here as well. And in addition, you have the option to go to their Discord, which is quite nice. So they started a uh, Discord recently. I would suggest for any technical details or any technical implementation questions to definitely join their Discord. So same thing for Flowwise and Langflow, both of them. They're quite active on their Discords and you can ask questions and get to reply quickly from their Discords. Langflow is also active on Twitter. So you can also follow and ask questions over there. Now, let's say, for example, we had this flow that we just open. Similar to Flowwise, the uh, options are to your left side. So in this sidebar, you'll see that all of these options you can pretty much drag and drop similar to what we have seen before. It also takes an input and then there is something as output. Uh, the good thing is you'll notice when you hover over the input, you'll see what is needed from that particular input. And also when you look at the output, you can see as where can these go or where can this block be used. So you can essentially connect it with those particular blocks in case you're wondering which blocks can you use this with. Now, in addition to that, you also have an option to delete a block. So that uh, takes that away. Uh, you can copy something. So in case if you had a, a block configured with all API keys and all details, you can just copy that. It copies everything with the API key. So you don't have to work again adding all of that info. There is also an option to edit and there will be a few of these settings available that you see in Langflow. So all of these are parameters that are in the original Langchain repo. So these are mimicked in, in here in Langflow. And the good thing is you can show some of these on the main screen if you like, or hide some of those. So maybe if I don't need the API base, I can hide it and it will basically be hidden from the main screen. So you can keep whichever you usually work with. In addition to that, there's also this option of documentation. What it does is it takes you to the original Langchain repo and the documentation about that particular block as what's been used in Langflow. So it's also quite helpful that you can see some of these examples as how they ran in the Python based Langchain. You don't necessarily have to understand the code, but you can just look at examples as what examples they use so you can mimic that in your Langflow app instance as well. Now, uh, this is about the blocks. There is again an option to import or export this particular file. And previously we have seen that for the complete folder or collection, this is this app specific. And also there is the option to use the APIs so in this case, I can call the API from an external app like Bubble, and then I can provide some of the available info from here. So flow ID, and then there is also option to change some of these parameters. So I can change some of the values that is available in here, tweak it so that I can configure it and send that from an API call from Bubble or any of the external application. So some of this I've also talked in the YouTube videos about how to use tweaks and the APIs. Uh, feel free to, to watch that. We'll cover uh, those details in here in the course as well. So you can follow along and how to configure this. Now, you also have an option to use this as an API. Uh, there is an additional option. You can run Langflow by exporting the Python code. So if you're familiar with Python, you can just build the blocks here in UI and export the code. So your Python file can run this flow, which is quite nice. So this is specific to Langflow that they offer this feature of exporting Python code. Uh, so you can build any of the applications, it could be maybe basic or it could be complex. And at the end of the day, you can just export Python code and then run it your, from your application. So with that kind of, it gives you a, a high level overview of 
the things that are available, the options that are available in Langflow, feel free to check these community examples. It'll give you an idea how to run some of these blocks. Now, the next thing I'd like to cover is other than the railway-based app deployment, if you were to run the same thing with render.com. So same thing as Flowwise, first thing what I'll do is I'll just go to the Langflow repo and I will fork that. So this is my forked version of Langflow repo. And now I can go to render and in here I can create a web service. And what we have seen before, we just connect it with that particular repo. So in here, I'm going to call this Langflow, perhaps test, that sounds good. And region is fine. The branch now, there are a couple of branch they have in the Langflow. These are just different things that they are working with. There is an option to go with dev branch. This might have some additional features or new features they're working on. But the main branch is the one that is tested and currently that is available for everyone to use. So we'll use that and then it automatically detects Docker container as well. And with that, we can just get everything started. There is not an option yet to have a password protection, but that is something that could be requested to the Langflow team. They're also very active for any request that is given to them. So feel free to request that to the Langflow team. So we're going to create a web service and similar to what we have seen before, it will start these installation scripts and it will probably take similar to around 10, 15 minutes or so to get this deployment up and running. And once the deployment is working and running, it should be available at the link provided here. So let's wait until we have the installation available. So I've realized that the installation on render does take a long time and sometimes it is not successful using the Docker based installation, the one that we have initially set here. So my suggestion would be to start with railway. I'm going to bring this up to the Langflow team to perhaps provide an easier way to deploy and render and then we'll probably update this part of installation later on in the course but for now i would suggest to start with railway and then one could always deploy on a different service but then also we'll talk about deploying these on a more persistent cloud services so you don't necessarily have to worry about deploying on render or railway where it is not necessarily persistent deployment so hope with that, you are able to run Langflow and you are able to build flows. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.